What's up world? The 2018 Ford Edge Sports battery has officially bit the dust. So we're gonna walk through changing the battery out. I've never done this job before, so honestly, I don't know how this is gonna go. First time for everything, so let's give it a try. First step in the process is to open the hood. Latch underneath the hood is a yellow stem. So we're gonna move it to the left and open the hood. All right, so we are going to, we are going to put the negative all the way to the back. Make sure it's on terminal good. Positive on the positive terminal. And we are going to set our co-cranking amps. And I'm just going to set this to 800 because this should be about an 800 cranking amp battery and start test. And immediately come up weak. And we're showing bad now. Okay, so the battery failed the test and the battery is obviously bad. The first thing that I'm gonna do is take the engine cover off and this may not be a necessity, but I do believe it will make it easier to access the intake boots over on the air filter housing and we're gonna to have to take the top off the air filter housing anyway. So I think this would just free up access. So the bolts up here on top of the engine cover are a 10 millimeter and we'll go ahead and get those removed. We're gonna loosen up the clamps on the intake boots and this is a 9 30 second socket. And next, go ahead and undo the clamps on the intake box cover. And you should be able to pop it up. There is two ears down in receptacles down the lower box to attach the upper box. So just pick up on the outside of it, slide it out. At that point, pull our boots off and we're just going to take the whole upper box and set it off to the side and while we're at it I'm going to go ahead and pull this filter out just so that it doesn't get damaged All right, next up to make things a little easier, it's probably not necessary, but I think it will make things easier, is to remove this ground strap uh, here on the, on the strut tower. I'm gonna take the ground strap, and just lay it down inside of the intake box. So I know it has to go back, and then I'm gonna take the ground strap stud and put it right back in the strut tower so that it doesn't get lost or misplaced. Next, we're going to remove the battery hold down clamp that is at the front side of the battery. And if you'll notice, there's actually two different sections here, two different threaded holes for that hold down. Looks like there was probably a uh, larger battery option. I'm assuming that's probably for Lincoln. But the, uh, the battery bolt head is just an 8 millimeter, so we're going to go ahead and remove that.
Okay, so next step is going to be removing the battery cables. And I have seen some videos where people will take the protective cover off of the positive terminal, remove it first, slide the battery back, and then do the negative terminal. I personally don't really like that idea just because of the fact of being able to short out something. I'd rather go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal first. So what I'm going to use is a 10 millimeter ratchet wrench and just reach back and go ahead and loosen and get the negative terminal off first. And when you go to remove the nut, just make sure that you have a good grip on it because you don't want it to fall back behind it. Set on the battery just for a second. And now our negative is disconnected and I'm just gonna tuck it up behind the uh, brake booster reservoir. Next up is the positive terminal. So just go ahead and remove the boot. And it is also a 10 millimeter. And my box in would not fit on it as you can see. So we're gonna do this the slow way, but it will get there. And that is our negative removed. For this, I'm going to take and be very careful with these sensors because your IAT sensor or inlet air temp is inside of the top of that box. So I'm going to sit towards the front, kind of tuck it out of the way. I'm going to take the negative ground cable that runs up to the strut tower, tuck it down out of the way, make sure my lines are out of the way. And I do not see a handle on this. And this is the factory battery. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to do is definitely not a necessity. I just like to do it to be thorough. Um, whenever you pull a battery out, it's probably been sitting there for several years. The battery that we removed is the OEM battery that came on the vehicle in 2018. So what I like to do is around the battery tray, it's just use a shop vac and get all the big debris up, any dirt, sand, dust, anything like that. And then once all the big stuff has been vacuumed up, um, take a small air compressor and air wand and get all the loose stuff out of there that we can. And then once it's all cleaned up, we can go ahead and get the battery installed. And while I'm cleaning everything up, one of the little tricks that I like to use is for the intake boots, just a clean plastic bag. Uh, it's just an old grocery bag and put it over the intake boots. That way you don't get any of that sand or dust or anything up inside of the intake. to go with is a Motorcraft AGM battery. AGM stands for Absorbed Glass Mat. And the reason why I decided to go with an AGM battery is just lead acid batteries can make a mess and cause corrosion over time. And everyone's probably seen it, the green corrosion that comes up on battery posts. So uh, that's the reason why I really like Absorbed Glass Mat batteries because it eliminates that issue. Um, I did check for the black clamp that is on the negative side and it fits great and again, the uh, Ford actually is, this is a recommended replacement for the original battery on here. The dimensions on this battery is a little bit larger than the original equipment battery. So we may have to use that second hole that we spoke about earlier that, the, uh, that has threads in it for the hold down for the mount to uh, keep this battery in place. But we'll see when we get there. Other than that, I'll give you the part number for this battery real quick. The part number for this battery is going to be a BAGM dash four eight h six seven six zero and i'll put a link down in the description below for this battery uh disclaimer real quick uh we do get a small commission if you use the link down below to uh buy the battery or any of the merchandise 
So any sales commissions that we receive goes directly back into the channel to help us make more content for our automotive content and also our outdoor channel. So if you haven't checked that out, please check out the outdoor channel and let's get to uh, cleaning this thing up so we can get the battery back on. Okay, so we've got everything cleaned up under the hood, so we're ready to go in with the battery. So the first step is to go ahead and put the negative terminal on. And the way this works is this nut just screws down and squeezes this clamp together. And this plastic piece here just keeps the correct angle and keeps everything aligned. So we're just going to get this tightened up. negative terminals mount onto the battery one modification that you will have to make is this small tab here where the negative cable feeds through and sits on this post you have to bend this down flat and the reason why is because this battery being physically wider it takes up some of this gap so whenever you go to set the negative cable onto the post it won't fit through that gap you take a pair of pliers or a small pair of channel locks and just bend this down flat All right, so I'm gonna pull this battery as far forward as it can go until we're ready to put the ground clamp on. All right, so we have got this situated so that we can get our ground terminal up in there. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is pull this protective cover off. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and install the positive battery terminal and we're gonna put the positive on before we put the negative on so that we don't have to worry about shorting anything out. And one thing that we have figured out with this battery is for the protective boot to go over the positive side we're gonna have to kind of angle it towards the front side of the battery so we're just going to pull it to the front that's the front of the vehicle and again this is a 10 millimeter and we're gonna go ahead and get this tight and this doesn't have to be very tight at all just enough that you can't move it around by hand and go ahead and put the protective cover on it and that should be okay just like that. Our positive terminal is uh, all protected and covered up. We're going to go ahead and just take the negative terminal and feed it around and go right on top of the post just like that. And our nut that takes a 10 millimeter. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but it's pretty straightforward. It's just putting a nut onto this post. And again, the easiest way that I found to do this is a just a ratchet wrench. And it's a 10 millimeter again. And now that everything's tight, push it all the way back up into place as far as it will go. And we're ready to, to secure it down. Now that the battery's all the way back up in place, we can see that our hole that we originally had uh, farther back up under the battery is now non-accessible. So I'm just gonna take this ground and kind of pull it to the side and our hole down should fit and line up. And it does. And again, this bolt is an eight millimeter. And we're just gonna run this down until it's secure.
not going anywhere. And as you can see, the ground has plenty of clearance, so we're not rubbing up against the brake booster and we're not too close up against the battery, so no rubbing issues. So we should be good to go there. And next up after the battery is all secure, we're just gonna reinstall the ground strap. Okay, so our ground is reinstalled, and next thing is, it's just reinstall the air filter. And the way this is gonna work is just, wanna get our ducts connected back up to the top of the air box. Like so, and then down here on the bottom, there is the two tabs that stick out from the top of the air box and they need to go down into the lower piece. Upper air box, the tabs are down secured in the lower air box down there. We can just go ahead and fasten the clips. That secures the upper air box. And then for our ducts, I'm just gonna start with the extension and this has like some knurls on it so you can get a grip on it and i just like to go hand tight with these and then once those are hand tight just maybe an eighth of a turn or so is all you need and that should work for that next up is our engine cover and this does take a little finesse to get it back up where it goes. An easy way to line this up is just the engine cover going over the filler cap and then there is a stud. And there's our stud, sit right down over that. And then once it seats into place, we can go ahead and start our bolts. Then our 10 millimeter bolt goes up in the middle of the engine cover. We'll go ahead and get that tight. And then last but not least, we'll go ahead and get our nut on top of the stud. And again, 10 millimeter. All right, let's start it up. And we got a key, let's see how it starts. Awesome. All right, listen, we really hope this video helped you out. We really appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Uh, if any of these products that uh, you've seen in this video, there's a link down in the description below and just full transparency. We do get a small commission off of anything that you purchase using those links below. Those purchases go directly back in to make more content here in the shop so we can put more videos out for this channel and also our outdoor channel that's going to be coming. So we're really excited about that. So please check that out. So I'm really excited about it as avid outdoorsman. Uh, really quick, I got to thank my friends over at Deathstone USA for the apparel and all the support. Those guys are fantastic. And again, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and it's very hard to stay consistent making content, although we try really hard at that. We're just average guys in a little shop behind our house, and we have full-time jobs outside of this. So please do me a favor and hit the bell notification, that way you're notified when we put up new content. And as always, thank you so much for jumping in for another ride.